All right, so I had a plan to do uh, a one take video, but then Sarah and I went to a thrift market and I found these really, really interesting welted cowboy boots with side zips. They were in my size and I don't know if I'm ever gonna wear them. I might just sell them, but they were 20 bucks. And I'm like, you know what? It would be so cool to make a video talking about how to restore thrifted shoes because there are a lot of people who would be really interested in wearing thrifted shoes and they don't really know what to do when they get them. Uh, so I have <laughs> got a lot of stuff to work on these. So most of this video is gonna be a one take, but I do have to edit this. So it might be edited a little bit, um, but, but here, here, these are shoes. These are shoes that I'm gonna start working on right now. So you can even see the toe on the, the right boot has some paint on it. They're just scuffs, scuffs on the heel. Everyone kind of gets those. And you know, this is some sort of corrected grain. We'll, we'll figure it out. It'll be an interesting little journey. You know, I got acetone, I got leftovers from dinner over there. I got renovateur. This will be interesting. Shoe trees, some, some gloves, we'll, we'll figure it out. Well, <laughs> all right, you know what this means? It means that we're basically gonna strip the whole shoes and then we're gonna apply conditioner. So we are getting rid of this acrylic layer now. We've basically just dissolved it. <laughs> um, and uh, I, you know, I had a feeling this would happen because I've done this before and it's exactly what happened. And all right, I don't, I don't think this is gonna be a one take. Um, so maybe this, this, this might not come out on Sunday. So this, this is gonna be some work and you know what, that's okay, because good things, good things require work, you know? What's cool though, is that now that we're exposing the layer of leather underneath this, this, you know, now that we're exposing kind of the acrylic, the, the, what? Can I put a towel down on our dining table? That's probably a good idea. All right, this is not gonna be a one. <laughs> okay, um, okay. Well, uh, the good stopping point here is I'm gonna strip both of these shoes now with acetone, and then I'll co I'll come back. I will come back after stripping these shoes. All right, so uh, ex excuse my mess. This is just kind of where I do all of my stuff. You got Freddy Freaker over there. You just have a pile of rags and cups that I use for all my dyes. This is where I take, you know, do all basically all of my shoe care stuff. But I've worked on, this is the other boot, by the way. I've worked on a big chunk of this boot with acetone, and I will do a time lapse right after this of just kind of what it looks like when you start to dissolve some of this stuff. But you can see this, this rear quarter portion over here has not been touched with acetone at all. But the second the acetone hits that acrylic finish, it basically dissolves it and leaves bare leather underneath. Uh, which for me is a good thing because it'll allow me to even out all of the color using dye. It'll allow me to condition it and actually penetrate the leather with conditioner and cleaner. Uh, so this is a win for me. Might not be a win for some other folks if they're looking for thrift store shoes, but you can tell even with the shoe trees in it now, the shape of the shoe is looking so much better. The leather, I mean, it's dry. It needs help, but there's no reason why we can't apply products to do that, to even out the color and, and really make these shoes look all, you know, better than they did before. I'm not going to say better than new because they probably won't look better than new, but they're going to look pretty good. All right, so I ended up moving outside. I'm gonna finish stripping up the right shoe here, but even feeling the shoe, I mean, it's starting to feel like leather again, which is really kind of cool. There's Moose, by the way, it's just sitting and <laughs> staring. Uh, but it's it's a beautiful day outside, so I figured I'd come out and just kind of finish up the shoes here so I'm not huffing acetone indoors, regardless of how good the ventilation is, that's no fun. But I mean, it's, it's, it's night and day how you know, the, these creases in the leather just seem to, they don't disappear necessarily, but they even out and you get these really, you know, they're beautiful, they're attractive micro creases that don't capture dust nearly as annoyingly as, it's, it's you know, it's really not patent leather. That's more of like a corrected grain, just acrylic-y situation. I don't know what it is 100%, but you know, this is gonna be so much easier to dye, to, to condition, to maintain, um, and, and it's gonna patina really beautifully over time. So I'm really excited to, to keep working on these. So we will see you in, in a bit. 
All right, so here we have a completely stripped shoe. I mean, the leather is, this is practically bare leather. Um, I, I see no reason why it wouldn't accept dye, so I figured I would take this time to sit down and talk about some of the pros and cons of, you know, this corrected grain almost, it's, it's almost like patent leather. I don't actually know if it is or if it isn't, but it's, you know, it's, it's, there's an acrylic situation on top and then you have plain leather. So with this patent leather, obviously there's, it's almost like a plasticky layer that goes on top of the leather that's easy to clean until it isn't. Um, you know, all of these scuffs are almost impossible to, to work out just because they're, they're kind of baked into the, the layer of that acrylic and you can't just wash it off with water. Whereas scuffs in leather are often scuffs on either a factory finish or wax and you can either buff those out or cover them with dye. Um, cleaning this, I mean, dirt doesn't really get to it. The leather doesn't really dry out like some leather does. I mean, looking at this now, this needs to be conditioned, but it also just got, you know, a total acetone bath. Um, looking at shoe that hasn't been touched yet and shoe that has been touched yet, you have two very different ways of, of caring. You know, this is easy for someone who doesn't care. You know, you put shoe trees in this and the creases kind of work themselves out, but they don't look... They don't look great. These, once they're dyed, once they're conditioned, once they're polished, I mean, these are gonna look so good. So easy, me, I don't really care. I just need a boot or, you know, this is something that will age beautifully over time that can be cared for, that can be maintained. You know, you can work on the leather, but but um, where I'm going with this is I, I, I didn't expect the video to go like this. I didn't expect the video to turn into, oh, I'm stripping these shoes and, and totally patinaing them and, and turning them into almost a brand new shoe, but that's kind of what it did. So I figured I'd use this as an opportunity to really talk about the differences between this acrylic-y, patent -y leather and then bare corrected grain leather that can be worked on. So I'm gonna dye these, I'm gonna condition them, I'm gonna polish them, and, and then we're gonna kind of do a side-by-side -side review and then maybe I'll just kind of babble for a little bit. So we'll see where this video goes. Oh boy. All right, well, okay, well, here's the shoe. There's gonna be some banging. I'm gonna try to edit this as best I can, but basically this this is a completely stripped shoe. Um, I've, I've kind of accepted that this is not gonna be a one take anymore. Um, and, and I'm okay with that, but you know, I'm still kind of getting the hang of making all these these shoe videos and make get in the hang of just trying to like be a real person and like balancing being informative and educational at the same time so uh, we'll figure it out so first thing i'm gonna do is using this thebing's dark brown leather dye this is not the pro dye this is the alcohol based uh this is an alcohol based dye instead of an oil based dye the pro dye is oil based and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handy dandy paintbrush right here and I'm, I'm just going to give, let's see, around, I'm thinking, uh, this is probably not the, the best place for, for this. So I'm going to move my thing over there. Just I'm like looking over here to make sure that like camera angles and stuff are good. So I'm thinking around the stitching up here that connects the vamp and the rear quarters. I'm thinking maybe around these stitching or like this stitching by the heel counter and, and maybe by the toe, I'll give it a bit of a burnish. So I'm just going to go and do this and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. You know, we'll, we'll just, we'll just see how this goes. So when, when you dye a shoe like this, the, the best thing that I can really say is that you, you really want to avoid stark lines. Like you want to make it look as natural as possible because there's nothing wrong with something that looks, you know, in, intentionally burnished or whatever it might be. But when you go to patina a shoe like this, the last thing that you want to do is make it look like, <laughs> I don't know, like it's trying too hard, I guess. So I'm just, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit liberal with how I actually apply the paint over here. And then I'll, I'll blend, I'll blend it all in at some point. And then if, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really not, it's not gonna look bad. I'm just, I want it to look kind of as natural as possible as it fades from this dark brown into a lighter. I'm thinking I'm gonna do like a mahogany over this um, just cause I think it'll look 
it'll look really good for <clears throat> like this this style of boot. Um, that that color eight patent look it didn't look bad. It just kind of looked off to me. Like I, I've never seen a cowboy boot in that color eight like burgundy burgundy shade. So I think I think a mahogany and a brown is it's just gonna fit the the boot a lot better and like the the style of well the style of the boot. I, that's really it. So I, I'm probably gonna edit this and move back and forth at some point. But one thing that I want to do right now is just make sure that like where these meet, it's even. And like the actual like width of the shading, I want that to be even too. Like I just don't want this to look like off. And, and even here you can see that like as it starts to fade and like blend in, I don't want any, I don't want any like light patches or anything that kind of indicates that a ton of work went into this. I just want to give the shoe a dynamic and good, solid kind of base level before I hit it with the mahogany kind of overcoat, because that's really going to be the, the mo like most of the color of the shoe. It's going to be like a red, brown, mahogany. <clears throat> All right, I need more dye. Oop. And, you know, I'm, I'm sorry if this camera angle is just absolute garbage. I, um, <laughs> I, I didn't think that this video was going to turn into what it has. I really wasn't expecting it to be anything more than a, hey, I, I thrifted these shoes and now it's it's really kind of blown up into something that, oh, can you see moose in the background? Oh, you can't. That's sad. Oh, puppy. Hi. Hi, puppy. I have to like be careful when I do this around moose. All right. So we're here, we're, here's where we're at right now. It's just, it's just solid solid lines um not really solid i don't know why i said solid they're just they're they're lines right now uh ba, 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 ba. And then i think i'm gonna and you know like i really I, I don't go into these for the most part like having a plan there's one thing about me that most people should know is like i'm not i don't have a plan <laughs> Like, I really, I, I really don't, I don't have a plan. <laughs> There's no good way to say that. I, I, I'm not an idiot. I'm just kind of stupid. So, like, here I am just, I'm just, I want these to look good. And, um, you know, I feel pretty good about how they're, I think they're going to turn out pretty good. I don't know, do, do people burnish toes on cowboy boots? Well, I hope so, because I'm doing it. <laughs> um... <clears throat> So what I'm doing here, I think I'm hoping you can see this in the center of the thing. I'm just going, yeah. I'm just trying to make it look as natural as possible. And then once I hit it with the mahogany, these areas of, of, of brown are really, they're gonna pop. And they're gonna give the shoe a really nice depth of color. So I'm using my finger here just to really blend these dark browns and like now that there's not a lot of dye on the brush left, I'm just gonna slowly extend up just to give it a little bit more of a dynamic look. Cause that's that's really what you want when you do these patinas is you just wanna give the shoe some character, some life, a lot of really, really nice looking shades and shapes. And you want to draw the eyes to the attractive parts of the shoe. And like on a cowboy boot, like this, this pointed toe right here, this soft square, this chisel, whatever you want to call it, you know, it, it kind of, it, it deserves a little bit more of a call out than some other parts. And I think what I'm trying to do when I'm kind of covering all of this is like, you know, this, this, this medallion over the vamp, this stitching over here, like this is, this is the, the cowboy boot thing. <laughs> um, so trying to really draw most of the attention here. And then, you know, some of these stark lines are gonna even out and be a lot less, uh, well, stark. Once it gets hit with a coat of, and 
I was thinking I could go super crazy and hit it with like red or purple, but I'm going to do mahogany. This, this is, this does, this is mahogany. I know it kind of is covered with some other stuff, but this, this right here, this is a Feedlings mahogany. So this is actually the pro die. Um, and the pro dies are oil based. I'm just going to pour it in here because I can and it will give me a little bit more control because I'm losing, I'm running out of stuff in this jar. So I'll be able to have a little bit more control when I get a uh, dye on my brush. Now people might lose their mind and go, oh my God, Harrison, you're using the same brush. Yeah, I, I don't care. It's gonna look good no matter what. Like I'm really, I'm really not too worried about this looking good. And now I'm just, I'm literally just gonna go over the entire shoe with I'm really not convinced that I'm going to go with even strokes either. And the reason why I don't think I'm going to go with even strokes is there's a lot of depth that this leather like can have. Like there's a lot of character that can be brought out in, in this leather. And I'm not saying that you should always, you know, patina like I do. But if you're going to do this, you know, have have fun, um, and and experiment, and and really, just kind of just kind of have fun with it, because this this stuff is fun. You know, like this is this turns into it's basically art that you're wearing on your feet, and like there's there's really no reason in my mind why you shouldn't enjoy it and have a good time with the the colors of your shoes and whatever it is, and and celebrate the the craftsmanship that went into building these or celebrate the the care that you put into actually you know applying all of this dye and well i mean i stripped this shoe for like an hour so you know the, the inconsistencies and the brush strokes and all of that stuff all it does is add character to this shoe and it, it to me it makes it more attractive like there's this notion that people have that like a shoe should be perfect and like the color of the shoe should be even everywhere and it's like that's to me that's just not true because like good quality leather doesn't even act, like it's not even in color at all and there's no reason why and for some people they might want it but like for for me this is this is really just for me like for me like I don't it's not that I dislike things that are even and uniform it's that for something you know like leather it's it, it it's it's not perfect. So when you like have this like corrected grain leather, they're taking imperfections and they're trying to make it perfect and uniform and that just seems kind of weird to me because like it's leather, it's it's a hide, right? It's the skin of an animal and sometimes you have blemishes and sometimes you just got stuff. But like celebrate the fact that it's not perfect. Like, this is a bit of a tangent in a story, but, I mean, we've got time for a story. I, I went to a flea market to buy these. I went to the Lucky Flea in Rochester, and I was talking to somebody about ties. And, like, you know, they were like, you know, your tie is uneven. Like, they came up to me, and they're like, you know, your tie is uneven. You, you got up in this whole ensemble, and they told me that my tie is uneven. Like, my tie isn't uneven. I tied it like this. Like, I, this is I, how I wear my ties. I do, it's like a Prince Albert, like a Prince Albert or a Prince Harry knot, something like that. Um, but the tie is a little bit crooked at the knot. And, you know, they're like, well, why do you wear your tie like that? And I'm like, a tie is a useless accessory. And there's, like, there's no value in wearing a tie outside of wearing a tie. Like, that's what you do. And there was, I was talking to a lady who sold me the tie. She's like, you know, your ties aren't even. It's like, there's nothing wrong with having fun with unevenness, with with asymmetric patterns, you know, there's a difference between peacocking and carrying yourself in a fun kind of... It's effortlessly stylish. It's sprezzatura, right? Like, that's the word. And and you should have fun with it. And there's no reason why you, you shouldn't have fun with it because, like, it's how you carry yourself. It's how you present yourself to the world. So if you don't have fun with it, then you just kind of present yourself like a stuck-up jerk. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with being stuck up and there's nothing wrong with having high standards. But especially, like, for me, where am I going with this? Like, I wear tailored clothing, right? Like, I, I often, I enjoy wearing jackets. I enjoy just 
wearing clothing that is a little bit more structured and whatever it might be. It's tailored clothing. I'm I'm a I'm a sartorialist, I guess. And um I don't know. Just the only th what I'm trying to say is that like have fun. Don't don't take anything too seriously. Have some fun. All right. I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to condition it and um I'm going to use Saphir Renovateur to condition this, and we'll talk about it then. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go. We're gonna condition this uh, once this is all dry, and then um, we'll see how it looks. All right. So now that the dye has set, um, took a quick like cloth over here, and I basically just buffed everything real quick just to see if the the cloth would run clean. Uh, <laughs> to see if the cloth would run clean. And it's indicating to me that the, the the dye has basically set into the leather because nothing is nothing is bleeding off, and that's a good thing. It means to me, you know, it, it, it basically means that the shoe is ready to be conditioned because the, the leather has basically been through hell. And you know, like I was saying uh, in my previous tangent, this unevenness, right? Like all of these little tiny blemishes and blops, um, they're attractive to me, which is why I wanted to paint a little bit, uh, a little bit, I don't know, haphazardly. And I apologize that whenever I bang, the camera also shakes. It's annoying. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't, again, I didn't, I didn't think I'd be doing this, but I, I do want to make a video that kind of highlights this. And this is fun for me. So <laughs> too bad. And now I want to talk about Renovateur real quick. So a lot of people say that Saphir Renovateur is like the, it's like liquid gold for shoe conditioning. And look, this stuff is amazing. The stuff is so good. But what you're going to see once I start actually conditioning the leather is that a lot of the dye is going to start bleeding. This is more than just a conditioner, it's a cleaner. And because of that, it has solvents, it has, um, it's, it's pretty abrasive. So when you actually start to condition leather with it, especially against crust, crust leather is an unpainted, un, it, it's basically leather that exists to be dyed and patinaed, similar to this. So when you use Renovateur on it right off the bat, generally it's going to start bleeding dye because you know it, there are solvents in it that are going to start doing what they do and it's it's abrasive so i want that for this i because what it's going to do is it's going to start blending all of these different colors in and and i'm just going to do it right here on the rear quarters and it's just it's going to bring out all of the beautiful different shades from the brush strokes and from, you know, all of the things, but you know, you can see that on the glove, it, it's bleeding a little bit of dye. And there's nothing wrong with that to me right now. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I have here, this is, you know, it's big four, which is way less abrasive that wouldn't do nearly as much. Uh, it's not damage, but it wouldn't, you know, bleed kind of as much as the Saphir is. But I, one of the other reasons why I want to do this is, is I have no idea when, you know, this base layer of leather has ever been conditioned. Uh, because it's been sitting under that layer of acrylic stuff for so long that, you know, even looking at this layer versus this layer, you know, this has been conditioned. Even if I just start buffing it with my hand versus, you know, buffing this, this is already starting to develop a shine. It's starting to look hydrated. It, it you know, this looks like healthy leather. This leather, you can feel the difference as well, but this leather is dry this leather is conditioned or starting to be conditioned and is starting to patina really beautifully. Uh, so once it's conditioned, once we introduce cream polish as well, uh, I'm really excited to see how the shoes turn out. So I'm gonna continue conditioning these. I'll do like one more here. I'll do it right, right on the toe. I'm just like knocking things over. This is just like a good, healthy, big glop of Renovateur, but that's okay. You can see it right when it hits the leather, it starts to penetrate the leather and just it brings out this beautiful mahogany color. I mean, that looks so good. Oh, look at that shoe. <laughs> um, you can see, you know, that little bit of the toe burnishing going on there. It's just, it's a little bit darker and it's a little bit more interesting right at the tie, right at the toe cap. So uh, yeah, I'm going to continue conditioning these and then I will be back once we start ready or once we get ready to start applying cream polish. So uh, stay tuned. <laughs> All right, well, excuse Moose, like, licking the floor like a total dingus. Uh, I wanted to go over the polishing of the shoes now that they have been conditioned. And you can see, like, now that they've been conditioned, the Severe Renovateur evened out a lot of the colors. 
but really gave like I'll just flip this around and do some stupid mission like maneuver. Like there's a really beautiful depth in the leather now that I'm, I'm pretty happy about. And you know you can see the the burnishing on the toe and then the burnishing around some of the stitches. Um, I, I think that this is a really really handsome looking boot now. So what I'm going to do is using Saphir Hermes Red and Saphir Dark Brown Cream Polishes along where I burnish the leather, I'm going to give the leather one final, uh, I'm just going to polish it, and then I'm going to brush it, and then uh, then we're, we're basically done with this. So I'm going to just go do that, and every single time I move, there's Moose's butt, you can just see big old dog butt right there. <laughs> All right, so where I'm starting now is, and excuse me, I'm just getting a little bit of cream polish on my finger. You really don't need a lot. And I'll try to position the toe towards the camera. And I'm just gonna work in this pigmented cream polish into the leather. So what this does is it does a number of things actually. First of all, it's pigmented. So it adds pigment back into the leather and helps even out some color. So let's say you scuff your toe, you can use pigmented cream polish to, well, add color back to the leather. And I'm just going real slow with this. I'm gonna let that sit now. Time to get a little bit more on my finger. You can even, I'm wearing gloves just because I just dyed these shoes. And like, especially with this, it doesn't add a ton of color to the leather. For the most part, it adds like a protective layer of wax and buffs to a really beautiful shine. So a lot of this is just, it's protecting the leather, it's general maintenance and care that's really important to kind of sustaining a shoe so it'll last you for years. You know, that's kind of one of the reasons why you get into these hobbies. These hobbies meaning like, you know, quality shoes or quality leather goods or quality goods in general is that you don't buy these expecting them to get thrown out in six months. You buy them expecting them to last you, you know, a really long time. And that's, that's, that's pretty awesome because I don't even know how old these boots were. I, you know, I got them for 20 bucks at a thrift store and with a little bit of tender love and care and just some, you know, a little bit of artistic creativity and Whatever else you want to call it, I mean, really, most of it's just shoe goo. With a little bit of shoe goo, oh, that was way too much cream polish. Oh, whatever, that's okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, boy, I added too much cream polish. Another bag of the shoe is going to be too brown. Oh, boy. <laughs> that's okay. Um, oh, my God, my window is wide open because this stuff kind of smells a little gnarly sometimes. So I'm really hoping that no one, like, just heard me babble like a freaking, oh my god. Like, I try my best not to swear in these videos, but, like, for anybody who knows me or really speaks to me, like, I love to swear. Like, there are times when I just want to be like, <laughs> like, I just want to, like, just, like, uh, butt balls. Like, I, I just want to swear. And it's, 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 you know, you can't just do that. So, so you don't. All right got you're really not going to see a whole lot but like it it does add some accentuated kind of notes to the burnishing along the stitching god that's it's looking really good i really love the mahogany color that because it it it's more red than brown but it's not a red shoe so i'm really really loving how it looks and you know it looks beaten up it looks like it's been through a lot and quite frankly it has you know, the, the, the process of doing this to, to leather is pretty intense. All right, so here we have Saphir Hermes Red, and hopefully you can see it. I have a light coming from, like, over here, so the lighting should be pretty good. But this color, it's, it's a really, really beautiful burgundy. This is, it's, quite frankly, it's one of my favorite Saphir cream polishes that they have. It just, it looks so beautiful, and the, the color that it adds into leather is, is, I mean, it really feels sometimes like second to none. It's just so, so beautiful. And I like using it on mahoganies just because it adds some really beautiful burgundy tones. And the depth of color that you get 
when you start blending in these pigments, it's just, it's so cool. And to see it in sunlight too, like it, it, it looks well-worn. And well, I mean, it really is because it is well-worn. It, it looks well-worn because it is. You know, the, these aren't new shoes. I didn't get a brand new pair of shoes and then just like strip the uppers. I, I have no idea how old these are. I don't even know what brand these are. That's like something that I don't even know if I've mentioned. I have no idea where these shoes came from. All I know is that they're, you know, they're welted. They are half lined <laughs> and like they're, they're cowboy boots. That's really all I know about them. I have no idea where these shoes came from. I don't know where they were made. You know, they could have been made in China. They could have made made in the USA. They could have been made in Mexico. Like gut says they were made in Mexico because a lot of these are made in Mexico. But like, I, I have no idea. So here's this like mystery story that this pair of shoes has. And instead of just getting thrown into a dumpster, you're just adding all of this life back into the shoe. And to me, that's just so cool because like, I don't know, they're really, they're, they don't, it doesn't feel like there are a lot of things out there that you can really do that with. Oh my God, Moose is so tired. I hope this camera angle doesn't suck. I'm just kind of going to live with it. All right, here's the polished shoe. I'm just going to buff this now. I'm just going to go over it with a, a shirt. I mean, this is literally, it's old shirting cloth that never made it into being a t-shirt. It's used for painting, but it's basically, it's lint-free. It's really great for hitting leather right after one of these because it pulls off any excess dye or polish. So it doesn't get onto my horsehair brush. an acetone container. God, I really hope that me like shaking this isn't like totally like shaking the tripod, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. You know, for all I know, it'll actually look pretty good. Um, or it'll look like garbage. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping it doesn't look like garbage, but uh, yeah, we'll see. All right. I'm going to, honestly, I think that's done. Oh man, look at that. That looks so cool. God, it looks so, oh, I want to kiss it. <laughs> I'm gonna buff it. So this is a horsehair brush, by the way. Uh, this is a Saphir brand. I have like four horsehair brushes. I use this one for a lot of my brown shoes. And you know, buffing horsehair or <laughs> buffing leather is super easy. You just go back and forth, and this is this is how you bring out that shine. You know, this is this is what's buffing all of the waxes and the polish and the conditioner, and bringing out that really beautiful shine in the leather. So I'm gonna finish buffing this. I'm just going to finish brushing it. And then I'm going to do a little side-by-side -side comparison for these two shoes. So uh, catch you in a bit. All right. So now that the shoes are done and this shoe is completely painted, it's been conditioned, it's been polished, it's been brushed. I, I, I gotta say, this shoe just looks so much cooler to me. Like it, it looks, it looks real where like this, this doesn't look fake at all, but like it, it looks kind of plasticky because it's covered in a layer of plastic. So after removing that layer of acrylic and exposing the leather, like the creases are a lot less pronounced. The, the actual shine on the leather, it's a little bit more mellow, but I mean, it's, it's a really beautiful soft shine. That's, you know, there's so much depth in the character of the leather now. And the, there's just, blah, I like, I like how these shoes look. I think they look really good. That's really all I'm trying to say. Uh, I, you know, this this video took way longer than I thought it would to make. I wasn't thinking when I hit acetone. Like, I, you know, it, obviously, when you hit this thing with acetone, like, you can see my hands are still a little bit dyed. Um, like, obviously, the acrylic layer is going to dissolve. But, like, God, I, it, what a fulfilling afternoon this was. Going to a flea market, finding some 20-year-old pair of cow doy boots. And, I mean, going from, like, this to this it's not a huge transformation but it to me it ah oh, look at it it's just yeah, it's so cool there's moose <laughs>